We're already going back to Graph. I know we took a break, but we're already coming back because Graph is too beautiful to be ignored for that long, okay? I just can't stay away from them. It's like not possible, not physically possible for me to leave them. But we've talked about traversing graphs, right? So now what we gotta do is we actually gotta find some useful information. And one such useful information we can find on the graph is called the shortest path. Hello everybody, I'm Cora, and today we're gonna be talking about a specific shortest path algorithm called Dijkstra's algorithm. So before we get into the actual algorithm, let's talk about what a shortest path is. Alrighty, here's our example graph, and you can probably tell what a shortest path means by the name. It's basically just the shortest path. I know, very cool. But yeah, let's give an example, right? So the shortest path between 0 and 2 is quite clearly 3. And the shortest path between 0 and 1 is no, it's not 7, because you could go 3 and then 1, that's only 4. So the shortest path between 0 and 1 would be 4, and then the shortest path between 0 and 3 would go like this, and that would be 5. And then the shortest path from 0 to 4 would be, you go like this, you go like that, and you go like that. And that's 9. Alright, so now that we know what a shortest path is, let's see how we actually find that shortest path. So one dude came up with a very cool strategy. His name is Dijkstra, as you can probably tell by the name of the algorithm, is Dijkstra's algorithm. And basically what this algorithm does is it finds all the shortest paths coming from a single vertex. So basically what, like what we just did, we were like, A, if we start from 0, what are all the shortest paths? So we found 1 is 4, we found that 2 is 3, we found that 3 is 5, and we found that the shortest path to 4 is 9. So basically what Dice would do is give you this list. Well, and of course, 0 is 0 from itself, so it would also give us that. But if your algorithm can't do that without the help of Dice, that's kind of sad, not gonna lie. So, how does this epic algorithm work? So basically what it does is it starts from your starting vertex at 0, and then it's like the distance from 0 to 0 is 0, so it has like a grid of distances. And this grid of distances starts out empty, because we don't know any of the distances, except at the very beginning, we look at 0 and we say, hey, how far is it from 0? We know it's 0, so we just put 0 over there. But we don't know what any of the other things are, so we don't change them yet. But then, what we do is we go from 0 and we look at its neighbors. So first we look at 1, it's 7 away from 0, so the closest path we've found to 1, the shortest path to 1, so far is 7. So we'd write a 7 in here. And then we'd circle that one, and then move on to the next neighbor, which is 2. So we go to 2. We'd say, our shortest path that we found at 2 so far is 3. And then we circle that boy. And then once we look at all of its neighbors, we go back to 0, and we're like, we're done with that. So we don't need you anymore. So we cross it out. Alright, now... Instead of taking things in the order that we looked at them, we take them in the order of how close they are to zero. So, if we look at the two things that we still have circled, one and two, which one is closer to zero? We see that the answer is just two. So, we would look at two next. And then we're like, what are the neighbors? So we first look at zero, but we already crossed it out so we don't have to worry about that. We look at one, well, the distance, total distance from one to zero would just be the distance to two plus the distance from two to one. So it'd be 3 plus 1, so it'll be 3 plus 1 is just equal to 4. 4 is less than what we thought our shortest path was for 1. We thought it was 7, but that's not right. So what we do is we just change this over here to 4. And then we look at the next neighbor, which is 3, and then we're like, okay, so 3. What is the total distance from 3 to 0? It's just the distance from 0 to 2, which we know is 3, and then we add in this edge over here, which is 2, so our total distance would just be 5. So we're like, hey, the shortest path we found at 3 so far is 5, and then we circle that. And cool, we looked at all the neighbors of 2, so we just cross it out. Alright, epic. 2 down, 3 more to go. And now which one do we look at? We gotta look at 1, we can look at 3. Which one is closer to 0? If we look at our numbers over here in this little data table thingy, we look at 1, 4, 3 is 5, and we're like, the shorter one is just 1. So we look at 1 first. Look at the name is 0, nope, crossed out 2, nope, crossed out 3. 3, however, is kind of interesting because we could get from 1 to 3, right? So the distance from 1 to 0, we know it's 4, as we have over here. And then the distance from 1 to 3 is 2. So the shortest path to 3 that goes through 1 would be 6. But we already found a better version of it, so we don't change anything. We already know that the shortest path to 3 that we found so far is 5, so there's no reason to change it to 6. Why would you want to take a longer path to find the shorter path? That doesn't make any sense! Alright, so then, we're done with 3, now we have to look at 4. Alright, so basically the distance from 0 to 1 is 4, and then we add in the 6, and then the distance from 4 to 0, our best shortest path so far, is 10. So we put 10 and we circle it. Now we're done with 1. 
Move on to three. We look at its neighbors. All of us are crossed out except for four. And then we do five, which is the distance from three to zero, as in our table. And then we add four, and we get nine. And nine is greater than ten, so we cross that out. Set it in nine. Cross this out. And then four can't have any neighbors, so we cross that out. Cool. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <gasps> this is exactly the list that we found at the very beginning of the video. It's all the shortest paths from the vertexes to zero. How did we do that? It's actually crazy. So the intuition basically goes like this. Let's say that we're at the stage where we've crossed out 0 and 2, and we're looking at either 1 or 3. So now, should we look at 1 or 3? That is a question. So basically at this stage, we've basically looked at all the shortest paths that go through 0 and 2. But now if we think about it, can a shortest path to 3 go through 1? Yes, because the distance from 1 to 0 is 4, and the distance from 3 to 0 is 5, and if the distance from 1 to 3 was something less than 1, then a shortest path through 1 would be better. However, can a shortest path to 1 go through 3? No, because the shortest path from 0 to 3 is 5. So any shortest path going from 0 to 1 that goes through 3 would have to be at least 5. But we already have the shortest path we found so far is 4. So it doesn't even make sense to look at 3 first. That's why we look at 1 first. Because it's guaranteed to not go through any of the other points we're considering, and that's how we find the shortest path. You don't really have to know exactly how directions work, but you basically just have to know that you have to look at vertexes that are vertices that are closer to zero first. So the way we would do this in code is using something called a priority queue. So basically what a priority queue does is it spits out the smallest number or the biggest number, depending on how you do it. And that's good because we want to spit out the smallest number and then look at that number and look at all its neighbors. So let me show you the code. Alrighty, so this is how it starts off. So we have n vertices and m edges. And then, basically, this is our adjacency list. And then, this long line of code is basically how you make a min priority queue. So by default in C++, our priority queue orders it from greatest to least. But we want to spit out the smallest first, because we want to look at closer vertices first. So we basically had to do the reverse. So in order to make it reverse, you basically had to do this whole thing over here, and then add the greater thing over here. And then over here, we have our distance array that you could see by our data table in our example. So first we read in our n and our m, then we read in all the edges, which are composed of the starting vertex, the ending vertex, and the length. And then we put it in both x and y in our adjacency list because the edges are bidirectional. Then we set all our distances to negative 1, which basically means that they're not set yet. And then we put our 0, 0 into our priority queue, which is basically like our circling the 0, 0 in our example. And then while we have more vertices that are circled that we haven't looked at yet, we basically look at the first one, and if it's already been looked at and crossed off and everything, then we don't look at it. But if it's not been crossed off, then we set its distance to the best distance we found, then we look through all its neighbors, and then push them with their lengths to the priority queue. So this is kind of confusing a little bit because I use a lot of pairs. So the reason why I use pairs is because you can match a length to a vertex. So basically in our dating list, it has an end vertex and its length. And then in our priority queue, we put in the distance from the vertex to the zero and the actual vertex itself. So for example, if we wanted to say one is like eight away from zero, then we put eight comma one in our priority queue. And because we're trying to minimize it, it'll check is eight the smallest one. And if eight is the smallest thing, it'll print that out. And then at the very end, what we do is we just print out all our distances. So right here is how I used to go with represent the graph using the example. Let me put it into the algorithm real quick. And with Blamo, we get exactly what we expected. 0, 4, 3, 5, 9, the magic number. Alrighty, so that's basically all you gotta know for Dijkstra. If you want to learn exactly how to code it, just look at the code that I showed in the video and try to like memorize how the structure works. The reason why Dijkstra is so useful is that you could find in a pretty fast time, n squared to be specific, you could find the distance between any one point and any of the other points. So Yusuko usually gives this in two ways. Either they say, find the place that's closest to a certain destination, or find the destination that's closest to a certain place. So if Bessie starts from this field, which field is closest to her, or if she starts from this field, how long will it take her to get to this field over here? So yeah, that's all I gotta say about Dijkstra's. It's actually a super useful algorithm, one of like the first algorithms I learned after DFS and BFS, and 
It's actually kind of cool once you understand it. It's really similar to Prim's algorithm as well if you heard of that. And I'll probably explain that in a future video. So stay tuned. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Comment down below if there's any specific musical crash courses or any like algorithms you want me to cover. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys next time.